All right, guys, welcome to the first ever uh, edition of Ask Online Media Tutor. Uh, so basically, the reason I put this video together is over the last week, I've had a couple of emails, one from Gordon and the other from a chap called Peter. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, asking me to do particular things uh, in Maya. So I thought the best way to approach those was to put a video together. So uh, the first one that I want to look at is Gordon's project. Uh, now what Gordon wants to do is he's created uh, an animation of a light bulb kind of hopping across uh, and he wants to uh, duplicate that animation over so he can create kind of an army of light bulbs hopping across. So I had a little um, conversation with him over email but he's not yet been able to get this sorted so he sent me his scene uh, and now we're going to have a look at that to see how we can get that to work. So if we go into Maya now and Gordon's scene, as you can see, uh, this is his light bulb. And if we play, he just kind of hops along nice and happy. Brilliant. Uh, and what we want to do is be able to create um, quite a few of these. So the reason that it wasn't working for Gordon is that there's a little bit of work needs, do needs doing to this light bulb to prepare it to be able to do that. So if we go through that first, that'll hopefully clear that up. So the first thing um, I looked at when I opened this was the outliner. So if I go to window outliner, this shows me everything going on uh, in Gordon's scene. Uh, and there's actually a lot more going on than needs to. We've got lots of groups going on. And this basically shows me that there's a lot of history um, on this board that possibly doesn't need to be there. So the first thing I did was set about getting rid of that. So the first thing we need to do is go to edit and then we're going to choose delete all by type history. And if you watch what happens in the outliner as I do this, some things disappeared. That represents history that didn't need to be there um, that is now gone. Okay, we've also got this paste and polish surface uh, and a group. Uh, and I can see that there are some sort of bumpy lines here which suggests to me that there's more than one bulb in the scene. And of course, when I move that out, I can see I've got this golden bulb happening as well. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get rid of that. I don't know what it's there to do. If it's important to Gordon's scene, I'm sure he'll be able to sort that out. Uh, but it turns out that the, the only bulb that I want to work with, and the one that's got the animation on, is this Poly Surface 2. So what I'm also going to do is... Um, if we expand this, you can see that this one item is still made up of lots of different items. Uh, and before you animate something, especially something like um, this light bulb, what you need to do is to try and make sure that it's one object. Or if it's not, place it into a group and animate the group. Uh, but that's not really the way that this one's working at the moment. So the next thing I did to pull this um, scene uh, apart and get it working was to just create a duplicate of the bulb. So, let's just do that. I'm gonna go edit, duplicate, and I'm gonna move the copy over. So this is my copy and this is the one I'm gonna keep. Uh, and I'm then going to just go back into my outliner. And this is my poly surface 10. And what I'm gonna do with this, I'm gonna go to mesh, combine, and this creates me a poly surface 11 and you can see this has changed. It's now one piece of geometry, which is going to make it a lot easier to animate. And I'm just going to call this bulb to differentiate it from anything else in the scene. So I now know what I've got there is all I need, which is good. Um, what I'm also going to do now I've created this, you can see over here, um, this is where the pivot is. It's not in the center of the bulb, which is unhelpful. So I'm next going to go to modify center pivot. And now I'm fairly happy that that um, is ready to take the animation. So what I need to do now is get Gordon's animation from Polysurface 2 and put it onto the copy of the bulb that I've created. This is nice and easy, thankfully. What I need to do, I'm going to hold Shift on my keyboard uh, and I'm just going to click and drag across all the frames um, that Gordon has animated. And then I'm going to right click on that and choose Copy. And then I can click on my um, bulb here I'm gonna to go to frame one right click and then I'm gonna go paste and then through to paste and we'll now see 
that this copy of the bulb has taken the animation successfully. No problems with that. So that means that I've now got the same starting point that I had originally, but I've got rid of all the mess, which is going to make the next steps easier. So with that in mind, I'm going to get rid of Gordon's original. See you later, bulb. And I'm also going to have a look in my outliner, if I can get that to pop up. Uh, and I'm going to get rid of anything that I don't think needs to be in there anymore. Ooh. Apparently that does. Strange. I'm just going to do edit, delete all by type history again. Uh, because it turns out I'd left a bit of history in there that was um, needed. Okay, so this polished surface 2 should be able to go. We'll get rid of that. And that, um, I don't know what that's doing, so I'll get rid of that. And it just leaves me with the bulb. Lovely. Right, uh, now we're going to get onto the actual duplicating of this. Now I've tried this a few different ways. I've been faffing with this for uh, almost an hour because it turns out to be a little bit more complex than I would have liked it to be. Um, but the successful way that has worked for me is to put it into a group and then we're going to duplicate the group and that will take the animation with it. So the first thing I'm going to do is with the bulb selected I'm going to hit Control and G and that puts it into a group. I'm going to rename that group Bulb Group. Uh, and now I know that this is ready to start doing uh, the duplication with. So I'm going to minimize my outliner for the time being. And I'm now going to go into Edit, Duplicate Special, and I'm going to click on the settings. Now, these are the settings that I've just been messing with. So I'm just going to go Edit, Reset Settings. So these are kind of the default settings you would get. Um, and the two important ones are Group Under and Duplicate Input Graph. So if we, write, uh, if we put the tick in the box for Duplicate Input Graph, what that does um, is that tells Maya that when we'll duplicate it, I'll, I want to bring any connections through with that. So the animation being one of those, which is brilliant. Uh, but now what is important is choosing the right one of these. And this is the reason I put it into a group. So we're going to have each bulb in its own group, and that is going to stop any new bulbs being connected through animation to the other one. So I could connect, uh, I could duplicate them across the first row, and that worked really successfully. But when I started moving them back, the rotation was breaking. So the one on the front row would jump, but the one on the row behind it would just rotate on the spot, and then the one on the row behind that would go through the ground. So uh, in order to do that, the the grouping method was the way to do it. So once I've got um, my group, before I do anything with it, I've got my group selected, uh, before I forget, I just want to um, center the pivot again, modify, center pivot, and now I've got a um, new group, duplicate input graph, so I'm going to click on apply, and I'm just going to move this over to start to create, in fact, let's not move it over, let's move it back, so I'm moving it back to create a second row, and if I scrub through the animation now, you can see that I've got two um, of these guys that are going to create the animation. So I can then do this again, apply, moving back, and I've got three. So if I want the three rows, that would be ideal. Now what I can do is I can select each one of those again, but I need to select the groups. I'm going to select bull group, and then group two and group four. Really, I should rename those, but I'm being a bit lazy. And now... I can duplicate again using exactly the same settings, apply, and I'm going to move that over, and we should see that we're starting to build this little army of um, light bulbs. And now I can do the same again, apply, move over, and do it again. Now because we're using this method, you can't just tell it um, to do your loads and loads of copies, because you can't move them across. So I don't think you can anyway, it might be worth experimenting with, it didn't work for me. Um, but what I do is just each time I press apply, I move across, um, and I can create as many of these as I want now. So, hopefully, Gordon, me old mate, that um, is the solution to your problem that you're looking for. Uh, if you've got any other questions, get in contact. Uh, I'll certainly have a look. But I think that will do, based on the picture you've sent me, I think that'll do what you're looking for. I hope that helps. All right, so the next question that I had come through this week is from a chap called Peter Popov, which is a cracking name, by the way. Well done on that one, Peter. Um, and it's to do with, I think both things are to do with my introduction to Maya tutorials. And he's got stuck on a couple of bits. Uh, so we're going to have a look at what they are and how you work around them. So as you can see, I've not actually got um, the 
room file with me uh, because I've recently upgraded some stuff. So I've just created an example and the problem that Peter's having is that when he renders he can't see anything and he's not sure why that is. Uh, fortunately I know exactly why it is so I'm gonna explain. So as you can see here I've got my room and this is the room where we've used back face culling. So what it means is that we can't see any faces that get in the way but they are still there and that's kind of the root of the problem with this one. So if I render this frame right now you'll see nothing uh, and it's actually a dead easy fix. The reason we can't see anything is because of where the camera is, where we are uh, in the scene. Uh, we're outside of the room. So to demonstrate that, if I go into a different view, um, that chap there is the camera. Um, if we have a look at it in a different view, camera's up there. So that is why we can't see anything. The camera's way outside the room. So when we render, we're seeing the outside of the walls uh, and outside of the room, there's no light. So we just can't see anything. The easy fix, there are two ways. The first one is, there you go, I've zoomed in and I can now see from my uh, top and front views that the camera is firmly inside the room. So when I press render, making sure that I choose the right view to render as well, um, I'm just going to click and I can see everything. So that is probably what it was. There is one other option uh, that it could have been. And the reason I thought about this is as we, <laughs> when I was recording this video, I made the very same cock up myself and had a little think. Um, why, why is it not working? Um, so let's say that I've been working on this view and I've been rendering it and it's working fine. I've been in my perspective view, but then I've changed something in my top view. And if you just have a look, there's a little gray outline showing which is the active view. So when I start going into uh, the top view, that gray outline moves and that's to show that that's now the active view. So if I render with that being the active view, it's gone black again. The reason being, I'm now looking from the top view and that camera's outside of the room as well. So that is what the problem is. Um, there is also another potential fix for that. Uh, if we just go create lights, I'm going to put in a ambient light. I'm just going to move it outside the room and up a little bit. So now I'm looking through my perspective view and I'm clearly outside of the room. But if I render, I can still see and I can see that I'm outside the room. The reason being is that now there's another light in the scene to light the outside. So hopefully, Peter, that clears that up for you uh, and you'll be able to avoid making that mistake in the future. OK, so that's the first thing that Peter um, emailed me about. Or actually, I think he might have um, put something in the comments on that one. OK, the other one. Is he's having problems with making animations loop using the graph editor. Uh, so I've created, again, a bit of an analog for that. So he's doing the, the solar system exercise. But I've just created a cube that's going to spin so I can show you the method uh, and where possibly he's going wrong. So I've got this cube spinning around. It's taking 100 frames. But I would like this to go on for more than 100 frames. I'd like it to go on forever. But at the moment, it just stops, which is uh, not what we're looking for. So, what I need for this, oh, where is it? Is my graph editor. And this, as always, it, it will tell me exactly where the problem lies. And we can see that the animation stops at 100 for a start. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go view and I'm going to go show results. And what that will do is allow me to see what happens to the animation after my final keyframe. So, what I suspect Peter has done. As he selected his curve, um, and then he's gone curves, post infinity, and he's chosen linear. And what that means is that it will continue following the direction that it's currently going in. But because this curve's plateauing, uh, it comes to a stop, and then the line stays flat. So it is still uh, following that rule, it is still doing what it's being told to do, but there's nothing for it to do. So what we need to do is get this curve straight so that it keeps going straight up so i think there might be a discrepancy between versions now because what i would normally do is i would select this one here this uh keyframe this point and i would go tangents linear but as you can see it's gone linear but after that it's still straight which i don't think was the case uh in previous versions of maya so what i want to uh do is change the tangent type until I get what I'm actually after. 
So in this case, uh, it turned out to be spline. So now we can see that goes up and beyond the curve and that's going to keep my cube spinning forever. So if we preview the effects of that, I press play, it's going to keep spinning up to frame 100, but then beyond that, it's going to keep spinning at a constant rate forever and ever and ever. Wonderful. Okay, another point uh, just to you, Peter, if you are watching this, hopefully you are, I will email you a link to this video. Uh, I have tried to reply to your comments on um, the YouTube video, so when you comment below, but I've not been able to reply to you directly, and I think that's because of your privacy settings in Google+. I may well link to a video explaining how you can put that right so you can have a bit of a dialogue with people through YouTube comments, just so that you're aware of that. Um, yeah, thanks for commenting, but I just can't reply. Okay, so uh, I've covered a fair few things in this video. Uh, there may or may not be things that you need to know, uh, but hopefully those of you that have watched that didn't necessarily ask um, what you've got from this is that if you do have any problems, uh, you can get in contact with me either through email uh, or through YouTube comments and provided I get time I will put something together for you uh, and I'll upload it. So uh, that's my first edition of Ask Online Media Tutor done. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.